And there is the old bush. Right, welcome back. And this is the third episode in this series where we're going to tackle today all the pins and bushes on the KW8. And as you can see, there's a load of pins and bushes that we've got to change. So we've made a start up here already, and we'll show you how we're going to do that right now. Right, so this hollow spacer here, that makes sure that the bush can be pushed right through. Because if you just had a big flat washer, it would prevent the actual bush coming through. So you can use that and then centralise it with this. So this is what I'm saying about having to have two hands free because it is quite fiddly as you're connecting up. Right, push that through to there. So now, in essence, we've sandwiched that bush between the plate on the end of the hollow ram and this end, which we've done up here. So there's only one way that can go now once the ram starts pushing out, and that's into this ram eye. There you go. And just like that, that's one of the bushes in. So now what we've got to do is tap the new pin in. And there goes the bolt which secures the pin. Marvellous. Right, with this one completed and done, as you saw, we're now going to do this one. And as you can see what we're doing here, obviously, work smarter, not harder. We're pushing the new bush in, which is pushing the old one out. Now, you can't always do that, but a lot of the time you can. And uh, it's the quickest way, because one out, one in. So we better get on with this one then. Give it a go. And there is the old bush. And the new one is in there. Okay. Looks good. Let me see just how dry that all is in there. That's had a little bit more grease. So that is one of the quickest ways to actually knacker a digger. Just don't bother greasing it. So with this end of the arm and the dipper and the, all the tipping links done, we'll go to the far end where the king post is. And where the boom goes on at the king post, that is where most of the play is. So we've got this one in here, this pin, and that's where the king post and the actual arm connect. There's a lot of play in this one. So now we've split the hoses left and right. There's a big bunch of hoses there. So we've probably got half of them this side, half the other, and then driven that pin through. And it's now onto the top of the bottom pin. So hopefully we'll drive that one to that one, that one out, then that one can follow. Keep going. Yeah. There we go. That's the bottom pin. So the pins are out. And now we've just separated that so we can get the actual bushes there. There and there and there. So that just shows that some of the pins can actually be removed um, with a hammer and a, and a punch and you can actually drive them out. Not all are like that, hence why we use the hollow ram. Here we are, that is the pins and bushes all done. 
uh, from that end right through to this end. And it has made a massive difference. I mean, you can see now, this is the reason we chose to go this route, which is a known brand as opposed to just some cheap import because parts are still available. Everything's got a part number, you can reference it, you call them up and they've got the parts, they send them to you. It's that simple, they still make the parts. So this is a 2016 model and if you had one that was, I don't know, maybe 1992 or even earlier, that still hold the parts or most of them and that's the whole thing going forward. So there we go, that just shows you the just having the correct tools and they're not that expensive just absolutely transforms doing a job like the pins and bushes. Otherwise, you could spend days, even weeks, just belting them out with a hammer. So, that's another episode complete. Um, and in the next one, what we're gonna be doing then, a bit of a change, now that it's serviced and all the pins and bushes are done, I want to be able to start taking all these panels off and looking at, there's a couple of hoses that we've got leaking underneath. I want to look at the running gear and then start addressing some of the more cosmetic parts of this. So for that, we're gonna move this to the other shop. Okay, with a little Kubota up at the other shop now, let's have a little look at the old pins and bushes in a bit more detail. Well, let's start off with a new pin and bush. So once fitted, uh, and you'll obviously grease this uh, through the grease nibble, that pin, We'll go in that bush, and if you look, there's not a huge amount of play or tolerance. There's just enough room in between the pin and the bush for grease. And the grease in between there, up inside the bush, will ensure that the pin and the bush remain parallel from side to side and operate efficiently. Now, when a pin and bush are left ungreased, uh, what happens here, and I'm going to exaggerate this just for the benefits of this demonstration. But first off, look, these are two bushes and they are the same bush. Can you see the difference in the wall thickness? That one hasn't had so much wear because it's actually been greased. This one, however, look at the wall thickness. There's a fair bit of difference. And don't forget, a millimetre here and there is massive, especially when by the time you got to the end of a bucket, you know, you can be that much sort of difference. So as an example, let's take this pin. And this pin is actually fairly good, but it'll demonstrate this perfectly. So as I said, I'll exaggerate this just for the demonstration. But if you imagine that this bush has worn really badly and so has this pin because it hasn't been greased and that there's a lot of play in between them. And believe me, I've seen them worse than this. Then what will happen is they'll no longer remain parallel and the pin can tip and pitch. Now, when the area of the pin and the bush are running parallel with each other, with a nice uh, surface of grease in between them, then they move and operate nicely because the weight distribution is even throughout the pin and the bush and everything's good. However, when there is wear between the pin and the bush and they're not sitting uh, parallel to each other, so one end is higher than the other. They no longer run evenly and they catch at one end or the other. And that works like an edge. Rather than a nice flat surface, it works like an edge and it just cuts in to the pin or the bush. And that in turn just keeps eating away at the bush and also the pin. Now, as long as you catch that early enough, you can just simply replace the pins and the bushes as we've done. But let me assure you, oil and grease is cheaper than steel. However, I have seen some cases where it's just been left and neglected and that continues to pick up on one or the other point. And eventually uh, that actually catches in with the metal because it's peeling parts of the metal off. That grabs up with the other metal that's being pulled off the pin and they lock together and then when they lock together, they don't want to just turn. And if they don't turn, you end up with stuff like this. You can see the actual welded in bosses that the bush sits in gets torn out. 
Now you think of the pressure and power of a hydraulic ram and it can't turn how it likes to uh, and how it should do. It's going to go for the next weakest thing. And all that power suddenly becomes part of the machine. And so they just go like that. They can't turn. So they just tear the bosses out, bust all the welds up. And in some cases, even tear the steel plate that the arm is made from. So never forget that. Oil and grease is cheaper than steel. Now, in the last episode, I asked you whether we should update the lighting on the little KW8. And uh, the vast majority of you said that we should go with LED lighting. And that is what we're going to do. But for this week's question, what I wanted to know from you lot out there and put your answers in the comment section in the old squip pit below this uh, video. So if you were designing uh, the next incarnation of the little KW8, what would you put on it to improve it? Is there something, is there a control or an attachment or some sort of... Um, bracketry or something that you could fit other bits to what would you fit on the kw8 if you were designing the new one have a think about that and put your answers as i said in the old comment section below this video in the squid pit and we'll have a look through them because i'd be really interested to know what you guys think so there we go another episode done and another step nearer to finishing the little kw8 and uh, I hope you've seen one or two things that you don't normally see. I mean, the guys that are doing this stuff day in and day out, doing the pins and bushes, they'll already know about this. But I think a lot of you, um, you know, wouldn't have seen things like the hollow ram and stuff like that before. Anyway, thank you for joining us and we'll catch you on the next episode. Do well.